Welcome to Mr. UFC Vegas Fight Club TV. I am Kyle, your host. Welcome to the podcast. Welcome to the prediction show. Glad to have you with us today. We're going to talk about Fight Night 133, Dos Santos versus Ivanov. We're going to get into the two plays that we have on this card, as well as our overall feeling on the card. We're going to quickly, quickly, quickly go over a review of UFC 226 and just a quick thought of what's transpiring now after the UFC 226 main event. And as well as I want to let everybody know, I will be away. I am leaving to head to the beach for a week with my family. We're leaving Thursday night, this Thursday night, and we are headed down. Uh, we will be back. Uh, it will be then Friday night. We will be back. So we're going to do a bunch of videos out there probably as well. Definitely the bet review show will happen there. So this video is actually going to be the prediction show as well as the Let's Chat video. So we're going to have uh, all the conversation you know, obviously for the predictions and things that you guys are having, as well as during the event of UFC Fight Night 133, to have the conversations down below here in the comment section. If you have not yet done so, do not forget to subscribe, like, head kick the bell icon, get involved with Fight Club TV. It's a UFC and gambling channel all in one spot. So, there you have it with that. I just want to get all of that out of the way uh, before we dive into the plays and as well as the review for UFC 226. So really what I wanted to quickly go over, you know, really before going into the bets is really the, what's happened now after the fight between Daniel Cormier and Stipe Miocic. Now, that fight took place. DC knocks him out in the first round in, you know, spectacular fashion. What a great night of, uh, of fights it was, uh, besides for the Naganu fight, uh, the dance around the cage there. But besides for that, the DC versus Stipe fight was a fantastic fight. Now, of course, we all know Brock Lesnar came out. Big thing going on there, you know, pushes DC and all these other things. And, you know, you know obviously now that fight's now taking place. But the thing I wanted to really you know, have a discussion over it and get your guys' opinion on is the fact that does Brock Lesnar deserve a title shot? I mean, flat out, does he deserve one? And you go back and you look and, you know, he's five and three within the UFC. Uh, you know, he's, you know, has won no contest. You know, he's got steroid, you know, allegations. He was suspended uh, for the use of uh, PEDs and, you know, whatever else he was injecting in his body. So now he's not even off of the suspension, and they're pushing this fight, which looks like he is not going to be able to fight until the beginning of January, so who knows where that fight, when that fight's going to be taking place, and he still needs to be clean, uh, you know, you know, he still has to prove himself, so it's, it's, it's a lot that they're laying on the line for Brock Lesnar, and for a guy like DC, who is now arguably the best fighter that's ever stepped foot inside the octagon is now fighting a guy that's five and three that you know of course he's a huge name with you know he's a beast he's a huge name he's always going to attract people to buy the pay-per-views of course that's big you know we always you know the money fights are always going to be the money fights those are going to be the ones that everybody wants to see and you know um you know of course you're going to buy the pay-per-views and all these things but when you look at it as a sport does he deserve it and, you know, for me, I'm looking at it and, you know, you got Stipe on the other side here that is arguably the best U, um, UFC heavyweight ever. And you got, you know, Brock Lesnar with all these, this downside to what's been going on with him. Stipe doesn't get a rematch. Brock Lesnar jumps in, knows that it's going to be a big payday. So does Dana White and all of them. But if you look at the actual landscape, these, you know, you know, Stipe just does deserve a rematch. Now, you know... You know, who knows where this is all going to be happening. And it doesn't even sound like this rematch is anything that's going to be happening anytime soon. I mean, if you really look at it, if you're looking at everything, you got to really say, all right, well, if he's his next heavyweight, if Daniel Cormier's next heavyweight title defense is going to be in January, and he's looking to possibly um, sometime before January uh, defend his light heavyweight title. <clears throat> okay, so, okay, he's going to have that. So you look at it, really the next time that Stipe has an opportunity to even do a rematch would be maybe the middle of next year. So you're looking at the fact that Stipe is completely on the shelf when it comes to having a title shot again. Don't really like that, to be honest with you. I'm, you know, I'm definitely a Daniel Cormier fan. Never, you know, I've, 
you know, I have nothing against Stipe, but I think Stipe deserves another opportunity to go in there and to fight Daniel Cormier after, you know, breaking records, longest streak of heavyweight title, all these things. Just, you know, it, it kind of bothers me that it goes right to where the money's going to be instead of actually doing what's right for the sport. But hey, that's my two cents. Let me know what you guys think. Just wanted to get that out there and, uh, you know, get your guys' opinions on that. So <clears throat> now let's get into the bets. All right. So we're going to get into the best bet play. Best bet play is 19 wins, 9 losses, plus 14.87 units for the year. So again, like I said, we're at that 68% uh, winning. So we want to keep that going. And it's going to be in the main event between Dos Santos versus Ivanov. And uh, I'm going to break down, like I said, I always do. Break down and rewatch the last three fights. And overall, again, stylistically, what we see and what the opponent can possibly expose and some tendencies that these fighters have. So when you go back and look, and if you go back three fights, you know, uh, you've got against Overeem. Uh, first, let's go for, well, actually, let me dot back for a minute. Uh, <clears throat> Dos Santos is 18 and 5. And he is minus 170. And you've got Ivanov is 16 and 1. And he is plus 146. So if you go back again for Dos Santos, he fought Alistair Overeem <clears throat> three fights ago. And in this fight here, it was coming off uh, a win over Stipe for Dos Santos. And he comes into this fight. And to me, this fight here was a fight where you take a look and you say these guys are two world-class strikers, absolutely two world-class strikers, um, you know, you know, stepping foot in the cage. And quickly going over it, really, I thought I liked what, you know, you see from Dos Santos. You know what you get from Dos Santos. We all know what you get from, from Dos Santos. So again, I don't have to totally dive into this, but you know what you get. You've got great boxing. You've got good cage movement, good cage awareness. Um, great combinations. He loves to throw some of those those spinning heel kicks sometimes in there he does. He's got just he, great with the leg kicks, the front leg kick to kind of soften up his opponent. He was doing some of those things against Overeem, and I think he was moving in the right direction against Overeem. He ends up getting caught, uh, and Overeem ends up putting him away. I thought it was a little bit of an early stoppage, but again, I like what I saw from, from Dos Santos, and Overeem is a killer, so you give... Credit where credit's due. He gets the victory there. Dos Santos gets the loss. Now, coming after that was against Ben Rothwell. And again, against Ben Rothwell, to me here, you know, this was a fight where Dos Santos dialed it back. He was a lot more conservative. He didn't really expose himself to going in there and just exchanging and just going in there and looking for the bomb. He just went there and completely had a lopsided victory over uh, Ben Rothwell. I think that he did a lot of really good things in there instead of just looking for the knockout. He went the five rounds. It was very lopsided. Ben Rothwell, at that time, Ben Rothwell had won four or five straight fights. He was looking like, you know, a, a really a strong force within that division. Things started to change for him after that, but that was a great performance, again, by Dos Santos. And then you've got, again, Stipe. Stipe, you know, in this fight, just put on a ton of pressure on Dos Santos. He really smothered uh, Dos Santos the whole time. I mean, even there was points where he was kind of running away from the cage, uh, just, or I'm sorry, away from the cage, but away from really being cornered and trying to find space. And Stipe just kept that pressure on. And that's something that Stipe does. He forces his opponents to just exchange. He forces them. He doesn't give them time to really work the combinations or maybe try to soften up the opponent. He really just pressures them. And there, Stipe gets the win. Stipe finished him in the first round. But the things that I liked about it is I liked the way that Dos Santos mixes it up when he's in the cage. He uses his reach. He uses his size. A lot of these guys he was fighting were very, very big guys. So it wasn't like, um, you know, he, had, he was fighting a smaller guy. But in this situation against Ivanov, he is fighting a smaller guy. Ivanov is 5'11", a little bit shorter, something to keep in mind, and we'll, we'll go back to that in a second. So going back three fights for Ivanov, he fought Josh Copeland. They were fighting in the World Series of Fighting. It was a title fight. And to me here, I mean, you know, I re this is a fight I did not see uh, prior, so I, re I watched it last night. And, you know, this fight... 
you know, this is for the title of the World Series of Fighting, and I thought they were so sloppy. It was like watching a backyard fight. Some random, you know, on YouTube, some random guys just throwing haymakers, not blocking. A lot of that was going on in this fight. You know, obviously Ivanov gets the victory, but to me it was just such zero technical skills for Copeland, and yet Copeland was landing. Copeland was landing. He was doing damage, but... Again, it wasn't enough where he was able to really stylistically put something nice together. It was more randomly throwing blows and hoping one of them land. And kind of Ivanov was doing that as well. Ivanov does get that victory. Um, then you go to uh, uh, Sean Jordan. Uh, and and <laughs> against Sean Jordan, I mean, this was where, you know, you got Sean Jordan. He's like 19 and 10 or something, 19 and 8, 19 and 9, somewhere in there. And, you know... He's 5'11", another guy that's, you know, very similar to the stature of what Ivanov is. Ivanov is 5'11", both, uh, even Josh Copeland and uh, Jordan were 5'11", as well. He gets, the, he gets the knockout victory. Ivanov gets that victory there, gets the win. But again, it was very sloppy. I thought Sean Jordan looked horrible. You know, he was hardly blocking. He, did, he just almost looked like he didn't even want to be in there. And, you know, so he gets the victory. Kind of want to skip over that one. But the one I want to focus on is against Alan Carr. He fought that was his most recent fight in uh, the PFL. And this fight was a fight where Alan Carr is the same height as Dos Santos. They're both 6'4", 6 6'3". 6 They've got kind of the same stature, not the same technical skills at all, but the same stature. And in this fight, I thought that Ivanov really struggled to get inside on Alan Carr. There was a lot of stalemates there, a lot of dancing around the cage. It was a little bit, you know, Naganu, um, you know, Derek Lewis-esque, you know, kind of, it was very close. Um, but they were kind of moving around, and, and even in that first round, really nothing happened. Going into that second round, they started to pick it up a little bit. It really started to exchange. But the one thing I kept seeing really through this, obviously not in the, in the Sean Jordan fight because it ended quickly, but the one thing that I was seeing was how quickly Ivanov gassed. I thought that was a very telling sign to me. I thought that, you know, even there, were, even when he what he's not that overly active. I mean, in, in, in the, and against Josh Copeland and Alan Carr, I mean, you know, he was not overly active and he was exhausted that second round. I mean, he was already tired. He was pushing forward and he's definitely a tough guy, but he was just gassed and they were, and it was just such sloppy exchanges throughout. And I think something to me here is, is if you look back and I will go back, if you look back at who uh, Junior Dos Santos has fought over his career. I mean, if you go back, let's go back eight years. So you've got, you know, uh, Roy Nelson, Shane Kerwin, uh, Cain Velasquez, Frank Mir, Cain Velasquez, uh, Mark Hunt, Miocic, Overeem, Rothwell, and Miocic. So he's won some of those, he's lost some of those, and if you look at it again, I mean, you're talking the elite heavyweights. These guys, you know, it's very hard to string together four or five victories in a row. That's why Stipe just recently broke that record. So it's very difficult when you're at that elite level. Now, you know, of course you're going to lose some of those. You know, when you're facing killers like Kane and Stipe and these guys, I mean, these are the best fighters in the world, so you're going to lose some of these. But you look at Ivanov, and he has fought no one even in the same galaxy as who Dos Santos has fought. Now, obviously, Dos Santos has been more on, on the tilt downward, but his boxing, I think, is going to be such a huge part of this fight. And I think also the size advantage is going to be another enormous part of this fight. You got a 6'4 guy and a 5'11 guy, and you got a one guy who is a very sloppy, and Ivanov, in my opinion, is very sloppy. He doesn't really piece together nice combinations. He doesn't really, you know, use much cage movement. He keeps his head a lot of times on the center line, and I think that's something that Dos Santos, who mixes it up well, who has great cage movement, who uses... Um, a nice way to really slow down his opponent even more is those leg kicks. I mean, he will just pepper your front leg. He did it to Steep a couple times where, you know, he starts landing a couple, you know, three, four, five of those, and things are going to start changing where your thought process is of are you going to be able to keep taking these leg kicks. And next thing you know, Dos Santos is throwing out those that, that boxing skills that he has, and you're overwhelmed. So 
in a fight like this, and Dos Santos being minus 160 to me, I think is a fantastic price for him. I think it's a really great price for a guy who's a UFC debut about to happen, who has not fought anybody even close to the caliber that Dos Santos has faced. Um, and again, you look at just the list of guys, I don't think that Ivanov is a bad fighter. I just think he's just well overmatched in a fight of this caliber. And if it's going to be a five-round fight, now, you know, It'll be interesting to see how that first round goes because that's where Ivanov can be dangerous. I think he can be dangerous there. But I think Dos Santos is going to be able to keep the distance, use his kicks as at least a, enough to manipulate where he wants Ivanov to go, and then work his combinations from there. If it gets past you know, the second round, I mean, it's just going to be, I think it's going to be completely overwhelming for Ivanov where the attacks come from Dos Santos. And again, I know a lot of guys say, you know, if you like, the guy to, you know, I don't really see this going to the distance, but I never, I'm not big on actually just taking um, a knockout on a guy as my best bet play. Because for me, really, when I see a guy that I like, I want to take him, whether he wins, whether he wins by knockout, decision, you know, TKO, submission, whatever it is, I want to have the full guy, especially at a price that's under minus 200 on a guy where when I first heard this fight, when I first, before I even actually looked at the odds, I said, he's got to be, you know, and I wasn't even going to pick it because I thought it would be such a high odds. I thought it'd be minus 250 or even higher, you know, so to get a price at minus 170 to me is a great price. So I'm going to put three units on Junior Dos Santos to beat Ivanov in the main event. Uh, again, best bet is 19 wins, nine losses, plus 14.87 units. So that is going to be the best bet play. And uh, the last one I will go over is a one-unit play for me. I'm not going to go and uh, dive into each of their fights in the past. I'm just going to give my pick here. And it is going to be in the co-main event. It's going to be Sage Northcutt versus Jack uh, Otto. And, uh, and I think, you know, this fight here, you know, Sage Northcutt is, you know, definitely a talent. I mean, there is no doubt this guy has sheer mixed martial arts ability. I mean, he is sensational when it comes to you seeing his backflips and these spinning kicks that he does and things outside of the cage. He does a lot of great things and, and he seems like actually a, a, a pretty nice guy and you know you know I, I think he teaches and you know I, I think he's great at something like that. But to me when I look at it, you know, it's very tough for him to really do what he wants to do in the cage. And when he's very much the guy that wants the space that wants the distance, and I see now he's starting to actually, you know, use some ground game, and in his last fight, he did that. He, you know, brought it to the ground a couple times, but his last two fights were against guys who were very much below par within the UFC, very much below par, and even it was, his last fight was, you know, against a guy who was eight and four, and, you know, not even anywhere where Sage Northcutt should be. I mean, Sage Northcutt at this point should be far more past these guys, and it was a very close fight, and a fight where actually you could almost give Sage the loss in that fight because of the takedowns and, and who had positioning, so I guess it's very close. But the fact that it was so close, and the fact of what... Uh, Zach likes to do here, I think to me, you know, you got a guy at, uh, uh, Otto is plus 106 and Northcutt is minus 126. Uh, so I like, I think getting a little bit of plus odds is nice here on Zach, but also the fact that I like the way that Zach and what he does in the cage. He's a pressure fighter. He's got a lot of strength. And I think if he can get inside on Northcutt. It's going to be three rounds of a very tough uh, fight for Save Northcutt to try to be able to get his kicks off, try to be able to get combinations off. I could see it being, you know, you know, Sage trying to wrestle him to the ground just because I think it's going to be too much pressure for him. But I think that um, Otto gets the decision victory here, but I'm going to take him straight. So I'm going to put one unit on Zach Otto plus 106. To get the victory here, I just think it's going to be, you know, Sage Northcutt lost a couple and, you know, he's been getting these victories, but the victories are really against lower level competitors. Not saying that Zach Otto is this high, you know, you know, world beat or anything, but I think he can do enough here to pressure Northcutt. So I'm only going to do one unit here on this play, but I'm going to actually have the three units on the best bet play. So those are my two plays for Fight Night 133. It's going to be um, Zach Otto, one unit at plus 106. And as the best bet play, we're going to have Junior Dos Santos, three units on him at 
minus uh, 170. And uh, there you have it, guys. And again, this is going to be the Let's Chat video as well. So all comments during Fight Night 133 all go in here. Look forward to talking to everybody. Looking forward to hitting the beach this week. And again, the bet, uh, the bet review show, I'll do that on the beach or, or whatnot. And actually for the next event, uh, UFC uh, Fight Night 134, Shogun vs. Smith, which is going to be next Saturday. We'll, what we'll be doing is uh, I'll probably do my prediction show on the beach as well. So you'll be getting uh, some different feel for you know, where I'll be. So if you've not yet done so, do not forget to subscribe, like, head kick the bell icon, get involved with Fight Club TV. And this is Mr. UFC Vegas, Fight Club TV. I'll see you on the beach. <laughs>